Good day, YouTube. I think it's like the 26th of November, 2017. It's uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving weekend, and I am sick today. No, I'm kidding. I am not going to work today. I have taken a vacation day, which is pretty rare for me. But I'm going to take advantage of another day off, and uh, we're going to start some of the wiring in the step van, and we're going to start with the... Uh, fantastic vent fans and get those wired in so here's roughly what's going to happen um, I got to get I have to splice these wires I'm gonna solder and shrink to them and get them all routed from the ceiling spaces over to the corners so the corners of the step van will be accessible lighting this for in here I apologize we'll get a light over here and so all the uh, uh, Interior lighting is going to be in these corner pieces. I'm probably going to make them two or four foot sections that will hinge open um, to allow me access to run wiring in here. This is going to be a forever uh, living vehicle. There will always be things to be added, changed, updated, etc. And I'll need to be able to wire in here um, often. So I'll have the ability to run from front to rear um, on the corners. And then from side to side in this front area and in the back. So I'll be able to go from one side to the other side with whatever I need. So this uh, piece of plywood I fitted in here this morning, I just cut it very tight and drove it in. I put about 10 globs of caulking on the back as kind of an adhesive. It's not going anywhere. And uh, over top of that, it's going to be like a control panel. So you'll be able to flip it up. Um, on hinges probably secure with a couple of screws and then the controls that you don't need to see and the wiring as it comes in will be hidden behind some of the things that are going in it will be um, like interior and exterior light switches um, the thermostat for the fantastic vent fans the reverser switch to turn the fans from sucking fans to blowing fans and the uh, remote for the generator, which isn't in the greatest shape, but it's what I have. And it's got a really long uh, hour meter on the back and switch connectors and so forth. So it's not going to fit in this space. So I'm going to move it ahead to this space and put a, uh, a board here forward and mount it in this space forward. It will look uh, decent there and it will fit there. So that'll give me easy access to start the generator or stop it from just inside the door. Um, and that will be great. So uh, I'll give you a couple of things that I'm, I've got to work with today. Let me get my light hung back up. Um, it just might be tips and tricks. Um, you're drilling holes through steel um, for routing the wires. You get, get, get a grommet kit. These are like five, six, seven bucks. You can get my Harbor Freight or other places. Um, I'll probably run out of some of the common sizes. I have to get another one. But uh, I'll scrounge around here and see what I got. So, uh, also, I'll show you how I've done my wiring. You might find it, or my wire dispensary, I guess I should say. You might find it interesting. Let me grab a quick light here. I hope I turn it on. There we go. So I've hung my wire, I get uh, 500 foot spools, it's 14 gauge MTW, that's machine tool wire. It's, it's very close to automotive wire. And I hang it up there um, on axles so that it's out of my way and always ready at a moment's notice. And I just simply grab it from here and I got some eye bolts in the thing right there. But anyway, then I can just pull it, you can see the spools rotating. And for this build, I'll just use a blue and a white for kicks and giggles. And we'll just pull it off the reels. And I'm just going to throw it through the window. If I can do it one-handed without getting it in my face. Whoa, almost missed it. Sorry. It's fighting me. Okay, we'll get enough in there. Today. There we go. Now I can dispense it as I need it. Um, and everything will be great. So now I got the wire inside. I can start routing it through my grommets. 
we'll get these all soldered up and shrink tubed. I can see I've drilled a hole through the wood right here to get these through out to there. I'm going back in through here, across to here, through that grommet there into this corner space, which again will always be accessible, and then drop down one of these couple grommets that I have installed, and they'll have to go to a relay. And I went around on my stash of items. So I got a relay here that will uh, be able to screw to that plywood. That's the whole idea of putting plywood here. I just have to use short screws, <laughs> bench screws, so I don't put a screw through the exterior. But we'll find the best place to mount um, these types of things, um, maybe all the way forward or something, and then uh, get them all wired up. And it'll also give me a place to draw the diagrams in case something gets a little complicated, then I'll have some sort of reminder to myself what I've got here. And I'll also put a fuse box in here because I'll have a lot of stuff coming in here. Then I'll bring a large wire from my battery bank, which isn't installed yet. <clears throat> Um, so that I can start everything from this location, um, including, again, interior and exterior lights. Everything will originate from here. Um, the battery in box, battery box, battery compartment that I'm going to build is down in that well. Um, there used to be a floor section there. It's all rotted out on the outside. So that's a great spot to put batteries. So from the outside, I'm going to cut the whole side of the step van open, make an angle iron frame, make angle iron frames for sliding batteries in, and then make a you know plywood cover that goes down with a few screws. So I can access the batteries either from the top or from the outside, probably make a door with expanded metal on it with an angle iron frame and set of hinges. Probably they'll hinge down to get it out of my way. So that's the idea this winter the two big steel projects I have are to build that battery uh, holder for a lack of a better word and then to take these doors off and build a ramp and that I may do over Christmas break I'll get a little more free time I'll turn the van around so I can actually build it onto the van I'll have to pull the van ahead because I have limited space in my shop and then work on it in the side the shop and then put it up back the rig back in every night and pull it out the next day to finish working on it so that's the uh, that's getting it started i'm gonna run down to our habitat restore here in town and see if i can find something cool for a door like a cabinet door that's like solid oak or something um that i don't have to like upholster so i'm gonna make that run real quick and then start running these wirings and start putting some stuff in place and getting some things connected. And we'll check back with you when I get all this boring stuff done. And then uh, we'll do a little test run on these fans. I have another video where I bench tested these fans and showed everybody how to um, buy the inexpensive fans. These are just the uh, uh, only go one direction. There's no thermostat on them. And it's just three speeds. And I bought these on eBay for a hundred bucks a piece. And you've seen these fantastic bent fans. You know what they cost. They're expensive. And this was a great deal. I bought three of them for $300 shipped. So I'm ecstatic about that because I think with three of these, um, this fan will be comfortable even in the summertime. However, if I decide to put air conditioning in, I'm going to run 110 volt cable to this fan location and I may change it out one day for a roof air conditioner or a heat pump which uh, when I run that wire I will take it over and tie it directly to the generator and I'll have another cable that come from the generator over and my 110 volt panel is going to be here my inverter is going to be here that's why the batteries are going to be here so shortest cable run to my inverter. In fact, the inverter might actually mount here um, and then feed 110 up here. And so I'm going to have the availability to run the onboard generator or shore power, which is also where I plug in a portable generator, my EU series Hondas, or the inverter. 
that's three slash four sources. And to do that, I think I would simply put a panel in, which I already have, and a cord and uh, one, two, three outlets. So I'll be able to take the cord that has a male plug on it and plug it into one, two, or three three sources separately and I won't need any sort of a transfer switch. So it's kind of like a manual plug it in. I'll try and make it look decent, but you know, this van's a lot about function. So that would be very easy. If I want to have shore power, I just simply plug it into the shore power plug. If I want to run on the internal generator, I just simply plug it into there. Or if I want to run on the inverter, I can just simply plug it into the inverter. And in fact, the inverter's got plugs on it, probably. I haven't bought one yet. Um, I can just simply plug it into the inverter itself. That's the plan for my 110 volt distribution. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to escape here for a little bit and check back with you shortly. Okay, well, it has actually taken me a better part of the day to get all this done with a few interruptions as well. Um, so let me walk you through what I've got done. I've uh, mounted a board up in this space. Cut it real tight, made it a good tight fit. And uh, as you can see, I've spliced the wires from the ceiling fans, routed them through the drilled holes and through the grommets. I taped them out of the way so that I can insulate. Um, so this is the front one. There are three of them. This is the middle one and then one back here to the rear. Um, so they're all routed nice and neat through grommets through the steel. And uh, yeah, this is my DJ position where I'll effectively be standing whew, right in the middle of these two fans. So uh, on low speed, they're fairly quiet too. So it shouldn't affect me too much. So uh, again, these are all routed. They're all parallel together. They brought I brought them down here. One, two, three. One, two, three. I actually stripped them out, put them all underneath one lug, and crimped them. And that is that. Now I'll explain what we've got here. So we're doing two things. One, we're controlling the fans on and off with a thermostat. So this is a, just a digital thermostat. I picked it up at a yard sale, knowing I would be doing something like this one day. It was like five bucks, brand new package and instructions and everything. And what we're looking for is one that is applicable for air conditioning. Because when it gets warm in here, I want the fans to come on. And that's what an air conditioner would do, is if it got warm, the air conditioner would come on. So we're looking for one with air conditioning. So this has a cool setting, which is great. To figure out which terminals to land on, um, the book was dumb, stupid, didn't mark it, it just had colors, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. So I just ended up taking an ohm meter and going across terminals till I could find one that came on when it demanded air conditioning. So I found the two terminals and I put a couple wires on it and I have rigged this up for this demonstration. I did pick up a, a big cover to go over this and this will be mounted on the outside and none of this other stuff will be visible. So, this thermostat is for control current only. It's not heavy duty enough to run the fans directly, so you have to put a relay in between. So this thermostat is only operating that relay. A relay, this is a 12 volt relay. You can get them at any auto parts store. They're about five bucks, four bucks. Um, it's 30 amp rated, which means the contacts in this will handle 30 amps and those fans are significantly less than that they're just a few amps a piece and so that's a very well sized relay now the terminals are here and here you would put it's seeking a, a hot signal come on focus there it is so it's seeking a hot signal here and the other side needs to be grounded so that's the green wire, leaving the thermostat, and it's landed here. The other side of it is the white wire, and that's grounded. And I've simply grounded it on this terminal strip, and I grounded it to the body of the step fan. So I drilled a hole, I ground the paint off of it, I've got a very good ground. And I'm sure I'll use that for other things. 
So that's this part of it. So when the thermostat says, hey, I need to cool, click, it turns the relay on. It's no different than if you're wiring up fog lights or driving lights or something else in your car. So now you need a circuit for the relay itself to power the fans. And we've picked a 15 amp fuse, the blue wire there, and it's landing. Let's go over here back to the diagram and I'm trying to make it focus. So it's this one here. That's your hot wire and you have a normally open and a normally closed. Well, that 87A, that's closed right now. That in an unenergized state, it is closed. So you want the 87. You want the one that will close when the thermostat tells it to, and that's what we've done. So what we have is the blue wire right there, back on that back terminal, and then on 87, is this blue wire, which I have run over to this switch. Now remember, I'm trying to accomplish two things. I'm trying to get the thermostat to turn the fans on, and I may wish to have them go in the other direction. Now you can buy the fantastic vents with forward and reverse, and you can buy them with a thermostat built into them, but they're pushing 300 bucks. Remember, I paid 100 bucks a piece for these. They were missing the trims, they were brand new, and they only have three speeds, no reverse, no thermostat. So I pick up a relay like this for five or four bucks, a thermostat for five bucks, or 20 bucks if I had to buy it new, and a switch for seven or eight dollars that I can use to reverse it. And I can do that with all three fans and save myself about $500. So here's how we wired the switch. So let's back into this thing. These are the fans. Now we're coming up to the switch, and this is a two-pole double-throw switch. So the ones in the center, the, what, the blue on the left, the white on the right, those are in the center. Those feed the fans. So we had to bring power from the Remember, we went into the relay and out of the relay over to one side of this switch right here. So we're looking, I've got my charger in my hand too. So how can I show you this with getting everything in there? Let's go to this side. So this side on the right, you see two terminals on that. One is from the relay and one is a jumper wire and it's gonna go from one corner of the switch cattywampus across here to this corner of the switch. So on this side, the positive and negative are left and right, positive being on the left, negative on the right, but on the front side of it, it's negative on the left, positive on the right, because as you know, most every DC motor, if you reverse the polarity, you will reverse its direction. So that's how to wire up a switch like that if you want to change the direction. So this switch has an off position in the middle, and in one side it will go clockwise, and one side will go counterclockwise. They're all three wired the same, so all three fans will do exactly the same. So let's turn the switch on. I don't know which direction it is because I haven't marked it yet. And right now it is 58 degrees, and the lowest set point on this is 59. So it is set, yep, that's as low as it'll go, 59. So I need to create the summer. Let's create summer with a heat gun. So creating summer and we're gonna watch for the fans to go on. There's the fan. Ready, aim, fire. And these uh, thermostats do take a few seconds, even up to like a minute. Ooh, there we go. There we go. And are we blowing or are we sucking? I think that piece of... Wait, I set that thing on the floor. 
We are sucking today. And right now they're all set on number three speed. So let's turn them down to one. One. Turn this down to one. And we'll turn this one down to one. I got a bug in there. It's a bug. So they're a set on speed blonde. Now I'm gonna flip the switch. Let's go to off. And now they just shut off. No matter what the thermostat's doing, we're interrupting the power here. And now they're about stopped, so we'll go other direction. And away we go. Now they're blowing. Now they're blowing. They're not sucking any longer. And they're nice and quiet. This is going to be just outstanding for me. So there it is. Jiffy Quick Overview. All three fans are parallel together. Whether you're using one fan, two fan, three fan, it doesn't matter. Right? Parallel them all together. The switch is simply taking the positive and negative, keeping them the same on one side of the switch, but reversing them on the other. Because if you have a DC motor, when you reverse the polarity, it runs the other way. The thermostat is just a regular old household thermostat. 20 bucks at the big box, Home Depots and Lowe's. It is simply operating a relay. That is just a 12 volt DC relay, just like you can get at any auto parts store. It would even come in a kit if you're wiring up fog lights or something. And this is just turning on the relay. The relay is taking a 15 amp circuit across the normally open set of contacts and coming over to the switch where we can interrupt it by turning it off or we can switch its polarity. So that's it. This is kind of a follow-up to the bench test of these we did some months ago. I'm just now getting around to installing them. While I had them installed, I just get around to wiring them, getting around to doing some insulation and paneling in the step band. So there you go. Appreciate you guys uh, watching and commenting, subscribing, hit that like button for me, please, and uh, we'll keep these videos coming for you.